what she did is very criminal and very serious. And it's too bad. It's too bad. And I don't, I don't know how a person with that cloud over their head actually can be running for the office of president. If Hillary is elected, she would be under protracted criminal investigation, likely followed by the trial of a sitting president. Here we go again with Clinton. You remember the impeachment and the problems. She is likely to be under investigation for many, many years. Incredible to see some of that stuff back. Candidate Donald Trump made a lot of predictions about what would happen under a Hillary Clinton presidency along the way on the long campaign trail. It seems one of his favorite predictions that she would govern under a cloud of ongoing and protracted investigations turning out to be the case for his own presidency. With us tonight to talk about it and more, Peter Baker, chief White House correspondent for The New York Times, and Michael Steele, former chairman of the Republican National Committee, both gentlemen, MSNBC political analysts. So, Peter Baker, how big is, to use his own words, the cloud over his head, over his presidency? Well, the cloud has grown so much that you can see the uh, uh, the agitation that he is feeling and that his people are feeling in these attacks on Robert Mueller. They had been told, the president had been told by his lawyers this would be over by Thanksgiving, it would be over by Christmas, it would be over early in the new year. It doesn't look like it's anywhere near over. And so you're seeing, you know, the beginning of the backlash. The frustration is, uh, is, is being expressed uh, through these attacks. I was reading something today. The irony is all this talk about Hillary Clinton and the impeachment He's, he's correct. There certainly was, obviously, a lot of uh, Sturm and Drung back in 1988, 1998 and 1999. But what it reminds me is the, the strategy that the Democrats used back then is very similar to what you're beginning to see now with Robert Mueller, which is deny the allegations, uh, discredit the investigators, and, and make everything about partisanship. Well, that was it's the same program back then, and you're starting to see uh, that play out right now. Michael, I'm going to put some poll numbers up on the screen that a lot of people found uh, disturbing today. Mm -hmm. This is NBC News Wall Street Journal poll, and we get that this result doesn't add up anywhere near 100 percent. But this is uh, the view of Robert Mueller. This is so important among Republicans, people who identify Republicans and were willing to answer affirmative or negative. 33 percent negative view, 13 percent positive view. Mr. Chairman, what does that tell you? Well, it tells me, if you just take and extrapolate it out, that that's uh, Trump's base. That's the core of his base. Um, his numbers are somewhere between 33 and 35 percent. Um, and it's certainly a, a, on a national level, and a, at a significant point, that's roughly 75 percent of that number is Republican. So that does not surprise me. There, there's been a consistent and, co, uh, you know, coordinated effort between uh, various media outlets and the White House um, that has uh, escalated uh, this drumbeat that we're hearing over and over again about Mueller, his team, the process, uh, the, the procedures, and, and even the law itself. And, and now what is so disturbing, I think, um, is the fact that you have members of Congress who should know better, quite honestly. They really should. Uh, sort of picking up this this drumbeat and 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 carrying it forward um, in a way that uh, I fear for them and that it comes back to bite them on their head when or some other body part when Mueller comes up with his findings and there's a lot of splatter in this thing so they've got to be very careful uh, about how they frame this argument. Peter Baker Watergate gave us so many expressions that exist in the lexicon to this day and I think the it's the derivation of bunker mentality. Uh, if I can think back correctly, do you think we've reached bunker mentality in the Trump White House or is that a moving target? Well, I mean, obviously, any White House under siege like this is uh, is filled with conspiracy and, and, and anger and, and suspicion and sometimes paranoia. You're sitting in those rooms, and it looks like everybody's out to get you. You're lashing out at what you see as unfairness, as persecution, and it often informs the political decisions that are made as a result. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not necessarily healthy. Uh, you know, some people in the White House have said that they worry that other people in the Trump orbit are wearing a wire for Robert 
Robert Mueller when they're talking with them. Imagine what that does to conversations. Imagine what that does to the ability to be a team and to have trust and to move and to move forward. So it's a corrosive situation for any White House to be in this under this kind of a cloud, as you put it. And it doesn't seem to be going away anytime soon. And they're frustrated by that. They're looking at a big win this week with the tax cuts. They want to be able to move into the new year with a head of steam. And yet this investigation continues to, to nip at them uh, day after day. So, Michael, you guys, and by that I mean Republicans writ large, you haven't burned your party card that I know of, control, no, still got it. control White House, Senate, House. But what has Russia writ large done to your brand? Oh, I think it has soured the brand and tarnished it immensely, particularly given that uh, the party has had, prior to this administration, a consistent hit history, uh, certainly galvanized under Reagan, in which we were all about calling out uh, the evil empire. And now we are part of that empire in many respects, who certainly seemingly don't mind it uh, and are less concerned about its comings and goings and its behavior, which is unrepublican like in my view, uh, I'm still waiting to, to read the memo that where we changed our perspective on this, because last time I checked, mm -hmm. um, Russia was one of those uh, uh, entities out there, political <laughs> and geopolitical and otherwise, that we as Republicans uh, warned against and, and, and rallied against uh, to make sure that the cause of freedom stood strong. Now that is overshadowed uh, a lot of the principles and the ideals and, and the policies, quite honestly, uh, that Republicans Republicans have touted and supported in the past. 